Hi, Christina Vasey Weinstein here from The Runner's High, an author of Anxious, how to advocate for students with anxiety, because what if it turns out right? The older we get, the less likely we are to try new things. That's not a criticism, it's a fact of life. We get older and there's more at stake, more risk. People are dependent upon us, whether it's our significant others, our own children, our parents or siblings, nieces or nephews. Our life is wrapped up into the lives of so many others. It's not just about us anymore. Age also allows us to consider the long-term implications of the things that we do. It's no longer about instant gratification. You can thank the well-developed frontal cortex of your brain for that awesome side effect of age. The frontal cortex is the last part of the brain to develop, and that doesn't occur until about age 25. Let's think about that for a second. College-aged kids, those in their early 20s. Sure, we were all that age once, but now that you're in your late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or beyond, be honest, that age group really annoys the out of you, right? Impulsive, self-centered, taking life or death risks, inconsiderate. We could go on and on, but there is something about an underdeveloped frontal cortex that's such a beautiful thing. Take this example for a minute. A 22-year-old recent college graduate goes skydiving. There's a horrible accident and that individual loses their life. How do you feel? Do you pass any judgment on their decision to go skydiving? Okay, same situation, only this time it's a 40-year-old, first-time skydiver and parent of four, all under the age of eight. How do you feel now? Passing any judgment about their decision to go skydiving? So what's my point? What am I getting at here? Well, as we get older and closer to the age where our brains are fully developed, it gets harder and harder to consider trying new things or getting involved in activities outside of the bubbles we already live in. We start over analyzing our decisions, thinking about everything that could possibly go wrong, judging others for the decisions they make when they have other responsibilities in their lives beyond just themselves. Now, I may sound like a hypocrite here. I mean, my slogan is, take the risk, what if it turns out right, right? The simple fact that there are slogans and sayings designed to encourage people to try something new in the first place proves my point. We don't have to encourage a five-year-old looking at a chair, the kitchen counter, and a cabinet full of chocolate to take the risk, do we? It just sort of happens on its own, doesn't it? No frontal cortex development, no consideration for what could go wrong. Must be nice, huh? The younger kids are, the more likely they are to want to try new things, get involved in something bigger than them. As educators and parents, we must take advantage of this. We have to get our kids and students involved in something that can serve as a healthy outlet, something they can look forward to when they are otherwise struggling and something we can use as extrinsic motivation. When kids and students have this carrot at a young age, it can serve as an avenue towards mental health as they get older as that frontal cortex starts making them too fearful of the long-term implications of their decision. If the 40-year-old with four kids, all under eight, had been an avid skydiver since he was a teenager, would you think differently about his decision? Students need extracurricular involvement. It doesn't have to be something grandiose or even typical. It can literally be anything. Soccer basketball, football, baseball, running, gymnastics, playing music, singing, writing, drawing and painting, coloring, archery, video production, photography, dancing, reading, 
biking, geocaching, cooking, or involving in religious groups. The point is, it just has to be something. More often than not, the students I work with who are suffering from intense anxiety aren't involved in anything. They have school and home, that's it. Once the anxiety sets in, it's nearly impossible to get them involved in something extracurricular. The window of opportunity has come and gone. There's too much to fear. Anxiety has won. Sure, kids might be nervous to take skating lessons at the age of five, but usually all it takes is walking with them out onto the ice, freezing your ass off while you stand by the boards, watching them slip and fall for 25 minutes, and possibly a friend to do it for moral support. <laughs> But it's a small hill to climb. The mountain you'll face if you make the same suggestion to a kid at 15 is not one any of us would consider climbing for more than a couple minutes. It's much easier to just let them stay home another day. Our students need to take risks when they're young, when there's so much less to consider. It's about giving them confidence, helping them build a life beyond you, and teaching them about perseverance. Getting our students involved in extracurriculars isn't about who has their kids involved in the most stuff. That'll just serve as another leak in the foundation for anxiety to set in later on. Plus, getting your kids involved in everything under the sun isn't a them thing, that's a you thing. Getting students involved in extracurriculars is about helping them find something bigger than themselves so their mental health will have a fighting chance later on when their frontal cortex starts to kick in and they realize that the world is a little more intense and a little less their oyster. I'm Christine Ravesi weinstein For more stories and strategies to support anxious students, make sure to check out my book, Anxious, from Times 10 Publications. Go to my website, RevesiWeinstein.com, for more information and follow me on Twitter at, at RevesiWeinstein. And don't forget, you gotta get out there and take that risk because what if it turns out right, not what if it goes wrong. Mm -hmm.